Self exercise 2.1, questions 1. Find the limit for each of the following functions when x approach 0. So first, we're going to try with direct substitutions. And if the answer is not equal to 0 over 0, then that will be the limit value of that function. For questions A, as x approach 0, so we're going to substitute the x here with 0. So 0 squared plus 0 minus 3. The answer is equal to negative 3. And that will be the limit value for questions A as the answer is not equal to 0 over 0. Questions B. Again, we're going to substitute the x here equal to 0. Then it will be square root 0 plus 1, which is equal to square root 1. And the answer of square root 1 is equal to 1. Question C. We're going to substitute the x here with 0. Then we're going to get 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 2, which is equal to 4 over negative 2, which is equal to negative 2. Question D. So for the x, we're going to substitute it with 0. It will be a over a times 0 plus a. So this is equal to a over a, which is equal to 1. Question number 2. Determine the limit for each of the following functions. To find the limit, first we're going to use direct substitution and if the answer is not equal to 0 over 0, then that will be the limit value for the functions. For questions A, we're going to substitute the x here with 0 as the x here is approaching 0. So the answer here is equal to negative 1. For questions B, we're going to substitute the x here with negative 3 as x approaching negative 3. So this will be square root 10 minus 2 times negative 3, which is equal to square root 16. Then the answer is equal to 4. For question C, again, we're going to substitute the x here with negative 3 as x approaching negative 3. So this is equal to negative 3 square plus negative 3 minus 6 over negative 3 plus 3. The answer of this is 0 over 0, which is known as indeterminate form. We cannot determine the limit value when it is in indeterminate form. Therefore, we are going to use the following method, which is factorizations or rationalizing the numerator or denominator of the functions. So for question C, for the numerator part here, we can actually factorize it. This is equal to x plus 3, and under bracket is x minus 2 over x plus 3. So here we can cancel the x plus 3. Then what left will be x minus 2. So now when we substitute the x here with negative 3, it will be negative 3 minus 2, which is equal to negative 5. Then it will be the limit value for question C. Question D. We are going to substitute the x here with 6 as x approaching 6. This will be 6 minus 6 over 6 squared minus 36. And the answer is 0 over 0, which is in determinate form. To find the limit value, here we need to factorize the denominator. Here for the 36, we can write this as x squared minus 6 squared. To factorize the denominator, we can refer to this. Here we're going to get x plus 6, another bracket will be x minus 6. So here we can cancel for the x minus 6. Then we're going to get 1 over x plus 6. So now when we substitute x here with 6, we're going to get 1 over 6 plus 6, which is equal to 1 over 12. Questions E. So here we're going to first substitute the x with 2 as x is approaching 2. So 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2 over 2 squared minus 4. The answer of this is 0 over 0. To find the limit value, 
Here we need to factorize for the numerator and also the denominator. For the numerator part, when we factorize it, it will be x minus 1 and x minus 2. As for the denominator, we can write the 4 as 2 square. Again, using a square minus b square, then the factorizations of x square minus 2 square will be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So here we can cancel the x minus 2. Then we're going to get x minus 1 over x plus 2. So now we can substitute the x here with 2. Then we're going to get 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 2, which is equal to 1 over 4. Questions F. So here we're going to substitute the x with 0 as x approaching 0. The answer of this will equal to 0 over 0. To find the limit value for f, here we need to rationalize the numerator. So the conjugate for the numerator will be 1 plus square root 2x plus 1 over 1 plus square root 2x plus 1. So when we expand for the numerator part, just like when we expand a plus b and a minus b, we're going to get a square minus b square. So here 1 square, we're going to get 1 minus, and for when square root 2x plus 1 multiply each other, this is just like third a times third a, we're going to get a. So the answer will be just 2x plus 1. And for 2x squared minus x, we can also factorize it, and this is a common factor of x. So x bracket 2x minus 1 times 1 plus square root 2x plus 1. When we expand for the numerator part, it will be 1 minus 2x minus 1, which is equal to negative 2x. So here we can cancel for the x. So now when we substitute the x here with 0, we're going to get negative 2 over negative 1 times 2, which is equal to negative 2 over negative 2, which is equal to positive 1. Questions G. Here we're going to substitute the x with 4, as x is approaching 4. It will be 4 minus 4 over square root 4 minus 2, which is equal to 0 over 0. To find the limit value for g, here we need to rationalize the denominator. So the conjugate for the denominator will be square root x plus 2 over square root x plus 2. So here for the numerator part, it will be x minus 4 times square root of x plus 2. And for the denominator part, after we expand it, then we're going to get x minus 4. So here we can cancel for the x minus 4. So now we can substitute the x here with 4. This is equal to square root 4 plus 2, which is equal to 2 plus 2. The answer is 4. Question H, so here we're going to substitute the x with 3 as x approaching 3. The answer for this is equal to 0 over 0. To find the limit value for H, here we need to rationalize the numerator. The conjugate for the numerator will be 3 plus square root 2x plus 3 over 3 plus square root 2x plus 3. So when we expand for the numerator, 3 squared is equal to 9 minus 2x plus 3. The answer for the numerator will be 9 minus 3, which is 6 minus 2x. For the numerator part, as the common factor is 2, so when we factorize it, we're going to get 2 bracket 3 minus x. But if we look at the denominator, we have x minus 3 here. 
So for the numerator part, we we can also have a bracket of x minus three. Then we can cancel this part. So here, if the numerator we are taking negative two as the common factor, then we're going to get the bracket of negative three plus x. If we arrange this, then we're going to get x minus three. So now we can cancel for the x minus three. So now, if we substitute the x here with 3, we're going to get negative 2 over 6. Simplify this, the answer is negative 1 over 3. Questions I. Here, we're going to substitute the x with negative 2 as x approach negative 2. The answer of this is 0 over 0. To find the limit value for i, here we need to rationalize the denominator. The conjugate for the denominator will be square root 5x plus 14 plus 2 over square root 5x plus 14 plus 2. So for the numerator part, we're going to get x plus 2 times square root 5x plus 14 plus 2. And when we expand for the denominator, we're going to get 5x plus 14 minus 4. So for the numerator part, we're going to get 5x plus 10. So here we can factorize for the numerator. This is equal to 5 bracket x plus 2. So now we can cancel the x plus 2. So now if we substitute x with negative 2, the answer is equal to 4 over 5. Question number 3. Find the value for each of the following limits. For question A, here we're going to substitute the x with 0 as x is approaching 0. The answer of this will be 0 over 0. To find the limit value for A, here we need to factorize for the numerator and also the denominator. So for the numerator, the common factor is x. So x bracket x minus 2 and for the denominator the common factor is also x so x bracket x square minus 4 so here we can cancel for the x so now when we substitute x here with 0 the answer of this will be negative 2 over negative 4 simplify this the answer is positive 1 over 2 questions b so here, we're going to substitute the x with 3 as x is approaching 3. The answer of this is 0 over 0. To find the limit value for b, we need to factorize this. So for the numerator, after we factorize it, we're going to get x minus 1, x minus 3. As for the denominator part, the answer will be 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. So here we can cancel for the x minus 3. So now when we substitute the x here with 3, the answer is equal to 2 over 7. Question C. So here we have to substitute the x here with 3 as x is approaching 3. The answer of this is 0 over 0. So to find the limit value for C, we need to factorize this. So for the numerator part, the common factor is x. So break x bracket x squared minus 5x plus 6. And for the denominator part, the common factor is also x. Then x bracket x minus 3. So here we can cancel for the x. Now for this part, we can continue to factorize it. Here we're going to get x minus 3 and x minus 2 over x minus 3. So here we can cancel for the x minus 3. So now when we substitute the x with 3, we're going to get 3 minus 2, then the answer is 1. Questions D. So here we're going to substitute the x with 0 as x is approaching 0. The answer of this is 0 over 0. 
So find the limit value for d. Here we need to rationalize the denominator. So here the conjugate will be 3 plus square root x plus 9. So for the numerator, the answer will be 5x times 3 plus square root x plus 9. As for the denominator, 3 squared is equal to 9. Then this will be minus x plus 9. The answer for the denominator will be equal to negative x. So here we can cancel the x. Then what is left will be negative 5 bracket 3 plus square root x plus 9. So now we can substitute the x here with 0. This is equal to negative 5 times 6 which is equal to negative 30. Questions E. So here we want to substitute the x equal to 4 as x is approaching 4. The answer of this will equal to 0 over 0. To find the limit value for e, we need to rationalize the denominator. The conjugate for the denominator will be 2 plus square root x minus x. So for the numerator part, we're not going to expand it. So just left with x minus 4 times 2 plus square root x minus x. As for the denominator part, 2 square is equal to 4, then go to minus with add minus x. So for the denominator part, it will be 4 minus add plus x. Therefore, the answer will be negative 4 plus x. So if we arrange this, this is also the same as x minus 4. Then we can cancel for the x minus 4. So now we can substitute the x here with 4. So this is equal to 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. Questions F. Here we're going to substitute the x with 7 as x is approaching 7. The answer of this is 0 over 0. To find the limit value, we're going to rationalize the numerator. So the conjugate will be square root x plus 2 plus 3. So for the numerator part, the answer will be x plus 2 minus 3 square, which is 9. And for the denominator, we're just going to leave it as x minus 7 and square root x plus 2 plus 3. So the answer for the numerator will be x minus 7. So now we can cancel for the x minus 7. Then what left will be 1 over square root x plus 2 plus 3. So now we can substitute the x here with 7. Then the answer will equal to 1 over 6. Question number 4. The diagram on the right shows a part of the function graph y equal to f of x. A based on the graph finds f of 0. So here when x equal to 0, then the answer will be the y-intercept. So for the empty dot here, there is no value for x equal to 0. But for the solid dot here, the answer is equal to 4. Therefore, the answer for questions number 1 will be 4. Question number 2. Determine whether the limit f of x when x approaches 0 exists or not. Explain. So here, x can approach 0 either from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. If the limit value when x approaches 0 either from the left or from the right are the same, then the limit exists. So here when x approach 0 from the left hand side, the answer is 0. But when x approach 0 from the right hand side, the answer is equal to 4. As the limit value here are not the same, then the limit does not exist. Questions B. Then find number 1, the limit of f of x when x approach negative 1. 
So here when x approach negative 1 from the left hand side and from the right hand side, the function approach 2. Then the limit value for questions number 1 is 2. Number 2, the limit f of x when x approach 5. So when x approach 5 from the left hand side and from the right hand side, the function approach 3. Therefore, the limit value for questions number 2 here is equal to 3.